from the ashes to school the masses. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 113 of the Scholars of Wrestling Show. I am a man behind the microphone, Scholar Jeff. To my left is Scholar Brian. What's up, sir? This is an awkward order of events. What? Uh, I'm always second. What is happening? It's it's. Scholar Tarek is on assignment, and oh boy, it's, what are it's we? one of the it's 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 a weird day. It's a weird day in general. <laughs> okay. Yes. I mean, let me put you up to speed. I was having a great couple days. I woke up, I, in the mail, I finally got my Shinsuke Nakamura shirt, my strong style shirt. I'm feeling pretty good. That he's been crowing about for the last two weeks. <laughs> I can finally support Shinsuke-sama with my dollary dues and everything in the world is nice. And then I wake up in the morning and everything in the world is bad. Everything is decidedly not awesome mm-hmm. today. Yes, of for, course. For for many reasons. Yes, of course. At this morning, as of about one a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we got the news as of just today. This recording that the ninth wonder of the world, China, has tragically passed away. Yeah, it as as much as everybody could really see it coming. Okay, everyone was rooting for her to get her life back on track. Yes. It... And it looked mm. like she was doing it. Now, whether it was a relapse drug overdose or whether she had done too many to come back from, mm-hmm. it it still, it, it sucks. Mm-hmm. It really does. 45 years old. Actually, according to some of the reports, she only she just had her forty sixth birthday, like okay. maybe a few days before, or maybe For, a week. Forty six years old? That that's too young. Absolutely, too Absolutely. young. She she will be remembered because she opened so many doors for today's women women to re- wrestle. Like she was the one who was basically like, we can wrestle the guys. Oh yeah, we and, can wrestle the guys, and it can work. And and she was like the first women uh, intercontinental champion. She was the only woman in intercontinental. On, only only woman. Like I can't see another one at this point in time doing it. Not yet, anyway. So, but she opened that door. She she put it in your head that holy crap. Maybe this woman could become WWE champion. Yeah, I think that's the next thing I heard as soon as this. Everyone kept talking about how cool it was that at one point she was number one contender against Stone Cold Steve Austin. Right? That that blows my mind. It was like, whether you like her or not in real life. Whether you like what she was doing afterwards, whether you respect her, don't like her, any of that, you cannot deny the strides that she herself made in WWE Women's Wrestling. Yeah, honestly, I think even all of that flowery language that we've been hearing ever since 1 a.m. Eastern Time this morning, I think even that sort of sells itself short i mean let's face i wouldn't even sure she was a trailblazer sure she was a pioneer all that good stuff but at the end of the day china was cool yeah i mean just especially after she had a little bit of a tiny little bit of work done china was freaking hot i don't care what anyone says you know you can make all the jokes you want those final days when she was winning the at the, the uh WrestleMania 17, that that was yeah. Good China Lord. in her prime <laughs> was just like, damn, son. Yeah, and and it's sad to me what her life became, and a- after she was basically pushed out of the WWE. Yeah. After she was basically pushed out, had nowhere to go, and fell into. The trap that a lot of wrestlers and actors and 
who no longer work fell into and it it saddens me that that this news came out well you see i actually wonder about that because i know i've brought up china's name before whenever she makes the news and i instantly want to put on my therapist hat here and just sort of like okay really want to examine what's what's going on with her like at least with sure she doesn't she may be out of the spotlight. She may have diminished opportunities. But I have a real hard time believing that she was completely out of opportunities, period. Like, uh, I know she made an appearance in New Japan, <coughs> like, immediately after this, or not long after this. Uh, there was a lot of reports that she went, that she stayed in Japan for a while and actually became an English teacher. She seemed like she was doing pretty well for herself there. I think once she went into the adult industry, Mm -hmm. that's when all this really started wearing her down, Mm. that kind of deal, because because that's when she started coming out with all the WWE, the anti-WWE stuff, Mm. when when she got into that industry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's... Yes, she had opportunities, but maybe those opportunities dried out. It seems like that was kind of the thing that happened. And and then she went and got into the adult film industry. And that is specifically when she started doing the weird things and and getting and getting all those fucked up pictures where where she looks stoned out of her mind that that, that's when those started coming out yeah that i can't i am not convinced it's just strictly the the adult film industry i i don't think i don't think it is either but i when your opportunities dry out like say she i I seriously don't think this is just this is opportunities alone because a lot of people even if opportunities are diminished in some way they don't take the exact route that China did. A lot of people's careers, period, professionally, even at their peak, don't happen the way China's did, in all fairness. Like, I was just breaking this down. I think it's safe to say that both of us and just about everyone who's ever been on this show and all of our listeners, I think it's a fair bet to say that most, the vast majority of us, if not all of us, have gone through a really crappy relationship and a really crappy breakup. I think that's a fair, most for the most part, a fair assessment to say. I also think that, you know, we've also had professional experiences that have been less than stellar. I can Maybe only, if you put those two together. Not only just putting those two together, just bringing that relational drama into your job and losing that job where and losing all that prestige from, from a very... A job that puts you so much in the public eye and you lose so much. And she was top billing, so she was making she was making bank. And especially <laughs> since if her autobiography is to be believed, she seemed like she was going through a heck of a lot of personal appearance issues, personal self-esteem issues, that taking away a big spot, like in the spotlight job, like the WWE gave her and she was a major star taking that away from someone who I'm convinced has some are, very serious yeah. image issues and, and then are we at that point you're like are we really surprised I that am this not kind of th- that, this, that this kind of thing started it's happening it's no coincidence that she's had so many had, had many plastic surgeries that she had it's no surprise to me that she's drawn to an industry that, you know, I'll, I'm pretty sure I brought this up before. I am not convinced, and I would not be surprised in the slightest if she was one of those types of people who only feels pretty when she's, you know, on her back. For she, she, I, I feel like she lost a job, depression, anxiety issues, mm-hmm. and perf- and body issues. When went straight to her head, and the only thing 
And once that happens, there are only a few things that can make you feel better about yourself. And she went in all of them. So, Mm -hmm. and it's sad, but it happens every day. Mm -hmm. And the kind of thing happens every day. It just sucks when it takes out someone so young that was, that had, that at the time when she was pushed out had a lot more to give. Mm Mm-hmm. And I, don't, and I honestly don't think that China truly realized how much she still had to give, or at least didn't for a very, very long time. And honestly, granted, I don't know everyone's personal lives, but just hearing some of the interviews and some of her reactions over the years, I got the very distinct impression that she never truly came to terms with uh, their his her breakup with uh, Triple H. I'm convinced of that I, Triple I, H moved on. China didn't. Well, because it's it's hard when the person who is basically scorned in the relationship. Because mm-hmm. because let's face it, Triple H broke up with China and moved on pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, but when you're when you're dating the boss's daughter, that 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 tends to happen, yeah. and and I'm not saying I it like was probably or like, like that. It, it was probably something like she must be prettier than I am, so I gotta do I gotta I I gotta do all this stuff and at least making that was her what feel she was thinking. making her feel bad about herself, and when that happens. I'm not surprised she wasn't able to get over it. Like yeah. that was that if it was in private wasn't out there for everyone to see then then I can see it being easier to get over it. But it uh, public. Yeah. This I, was say, I wouldn't even say it was it would be easier even if it was pu- private. Even if it was entirely private and we just the news like never broke out in public. That's still a really hard thing to go through. It's still a really hard I'm not thing to go through. It's it's still a really hard thing to go through. But multiply that by like 10 because it's all you ever hear about. It's in the media. It's coming back to you whether you want to talk about it or not. Maybe you're kind of getting over it. Okay, you're out of the public eye mm-hmm. for a couple months. Every it's, it's slowly it's going to the back of your mind, and then someone wants to do an interview and brings it up again. So, or you're just so it's by like, people who just want to exploit you. Yeah, exactly. So harder than usual. I'll go with that. That's it's, it's hard. That's no, fair. it's hard no matter what. But when you're in the public eye like that, and something like something like the Triple H, Stephanie McMahon. And China scandal air quotes goes on. It's it's harder than it's harder than usual yeah, to I'm get over den- that. And I'm not denying that one little bit. So it it doesn't surprise me that all this stuff that that she kind of went off the rails. Yeah, like she did. That that's an expected response mm. to that kind of thing. But it it just sucks that it went this far. Yeah. And I think this, it's weird. When I was thinking about this, there's this something about this whole China case that really, really made me profoundly sad. Like, honestly, this hit me more than any Guerrero did. And after thinking about it for a while, I think I really figured out why. After all the way, the after the way so many of these stories ended, like with Eddie Guerrero, Eddie Guerrero eventually, you know, had a great family, conquered drugs and alcohol. Even though he died relatively young, he still had that, you know, light at the end of the tunnel and everyone lived happily ever, ever after story. Yeah. Especially with so many others who have sort of come around the bend. Uh, like with Scott Hall, he he's doing better now. He's doing better. He looks better Jake than he Sna- has. In- Jake the Snake, he's... He even came around, even when he was like the poster boy for how to do things wrong in the business. Even I'm hearing reports that the Iron Sheik finally 
completely kicked his drug habit and is and just, is somewhat healthy. Yeah, <laughs> as he's still you know, beat up quite a he's bit. He's still the Iron Sheik, was. but he's still the Iron Sheik, but he's semi healthy now. Yeah, and then I guess when we've sort of seen like little hints of China potentially getting better, like so. I saw a vlog post right at the beginning of the year when she seemed she seemed healthy. She seemed in her right mind. She seemed very happy and well-spoken and optimistic. And she even looked pretty damn good, too. Better than I've seen her in a good long while. And then I think maybe only a few days before now, I think the, the last video on her YouTube page is... Her extremely out of it, extremely tired. I'm like, whoa, what the heck happened? So it's just a very, very sad end to someone who, just knowing what I know about, you know, relations and therapy and what I see so many red flags that could have been addressed, so many ways that she could have been helped. But for whatever reason, whether no one reached out to her or she never accepted or didn't know to accept it, she just it didn't seem like she ever truly got the help that she needed. And that, to me, is just one of the saddest things of all. So you want someone close chapter like that. That's the saddest thing to me. Yep. Agreed. So, in the interest of not ending this on a somber note and knowing her, what she contributed and what she did... Real quick, mini scholars, quick talk. Favorite China memory? Favorite China memory? The guitar over Jeff Jarrett's head, winning, going on to win the Intercontinental title. Mm-hmm. That was huge, and and just the look of shock on Jarrett's face with the guitar smashed over his head. Mm-hmm. His head stuck in the guitar. With with his, I can't believe that just happened. Look on his face, <laughs> and he technically wasn't even under contract with WWE at that point. He was just right. a, a, he was just paid as like a one off appearance just to get the feud over with. Yeah, and he sold it so well that it catapulted China for mm-hmm. and for the time in the in the company that she had left. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for some reason. There's so much to remember about China, but for some reason, I just keep going back to this one one weird little promo. It was during her feud with Chris Jericho for the Intercontinental title. I think the cat was uh, falling around as sort of like a little cosplay sidekick or whatever. And so Chris Jericho came out. He was demanding a like a match for the Intercontinental title, and then he was just like, "Give me a match for the Intercontinental title right tonight!" Like. She's like, oh, I'll I'll give you the, a rematch for the title, just not tonight. I'm sure you hear this a lot, Chris, but not tonight. I've got a headache. It's, like, it's totally playing <laughs> and then out, you get, out to the hill. And then and then you get so the cool. line the, the line that a lot of people remembered Chris Jericho for back in those days. I told my mother that I would never hit a woman, but you are not a woman. <laughs> oh. <snap. laughs> And and in classic Dick Jericho turn tone, the sarcastic tone. Oh yeah. So that that entire four months that from when the feud with Jarrett started through to the end of the Jericho China feud was, I think, the highlight of her WWE career mm-hmm. in my eyes, because. Those four months were gold. Oh yeah, definitely. So, and and th- those specific four months opened the door to thoughts of a, a woman's WWE World Champion could actually happen. Mm-hmm. And and then it just kind of and then it just kind of went away, and that's a shame. Mm-hmm. <laughs> One last thought, because I know that this one has also come up a little bit. Given this change of circumstance and cha- potential change in perception, does this make China a candidate for the Hall of Fame? Does this change anything? 
I still think it's going to be a few years down the road, maybe. Mm-hmm. I, I, don't, I don't think it's going to be right away. But I've always thought that she should be part of the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. Just, just because of the doors that she opened. Mm-hmm. And all that. So in, in the next few years, maybe, but not right away. That's fair. Let, let it simmer. I can see that. Let it simmer and then give her a spot. That's because fair. there was still bad blood there at the end. Yeah. So. So. Again, we could go on and on. I'm sure we were not saying anything or much that hasn't already been said already by this point. So all I've got, all I've got to say is thank you, China. You deserve better. I think we all realize that now. I hope so. So. Miss rest, China, rest in peace. Rest in peace with the angels. Mm-hmm. May flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. Say hello to Dusty for us. Mm-hmm. And that's that's one thing really sweet and kind of sad that, you know, some as soon as I saw this, another person posted on the thing it was like Reddit or something. Well, Eddie got his mama Sita back. Yeah. They're they're up they're up in the clouds having the uh, Mama Sita review. Reunion. Getting the low right rider. now. That, that's oh, something I'd like to see. <laughs> uh, well, enough of that sad stuff. Because you know what? It wasn't all bad. After all, it was actually a pretty hefty news week. So let's jump right into, even maybe a little bit later than normal, let's jump right into a little bit of backstage news. That's right. Let's go behind the curtain and talk a little Backstage news. 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 Meh. Uh, that, that was that was weak. Yeah, I, uh, that was weak, and I'm and pretty you, sure I got the statement wrong. But <laughs> it's just not the same without three people here. But you know what? We'll make do. <laughs> Besides, I think it's time for a little something that uh, I've wanted to talk about for a little while now. It's just, as soon as I got, we got this all out of our systems, it just, it's coming back in full force. The jokes are coming back, ladies and gentlemen. New Japan's G1 Climax 26 is coming back this summer. And of course, as soon as I hear about this, the first place I see it announced is on the New Japan English Facebook page. And of course, they've got the brilliant award-winning caption... Who's going to climax this summer? I'm like, yes! I'm like damn it! <laughs> you just can't leave well building enough alone. Up, building up to a massive climax this summer. It's gonna be. Uh, it's gonna be astounding. <laughs> uh, uh, the, the jokes are never gonna end. I'm never gonna. How, get can, a... how can they when it, when the New Japan website is doing it to themselves? Uh, <laughs> They're do- someone spying on the it. jokes. The jokes, they're telling themselves. <laughs> All right, with a semi-serious me- methodology of thinking here, I'm taking a step back, it seems like New Japan, at least in the past year, has taken a pretty serious hit as far as their roster is concerned. AJ Styles is currently feuding with Roman Reigns. Nakamura is over as all get out. Nakamura is over as all get out and beating the crap out of Sami Zayn. Which is in a manner most <laughs> awesome. Yes. Soon to destroy Elias Sampson in a manner most awesome. Oh. You've got Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson back also beating up on Roman Reigns. Beating up Roman Reigns and the Usos. I'd, oh. Oh. I'd, I'd, six man tag. Yes. It's in the cards, baby. It's in the cards. Six men. I just thought about it. I didn't think about it. I, I, that didn't click in my head till right now. I'd be like, how? D-? It clicked. It clicked in my head, and I was like, stupid. <laughs> Why were you not thinking about this? And on top of all of this, they now they also have Kota Ibushi probably in the mix somewhere. More than likely going to be in the global cruiserweight tournament somewhere. But but let's face it, okay. It's New Japan Pro Wrestling. Okay. Mm-hmm. They are never without talent. 
Oh no, I'm not okay. saying they're not without it's like, talent. No, I'm just, it's it's definitely going to be a change. Oh yeah. They're, they're, that's why it's something to look forward to. Yeah. Because last last year was a little. The wrestling was stupendous. It some of the was. best, some of the best I've ever seen. But the pairings and the participants were kind of paid by numbers. They were all expected to be there. Right. They were all expected to be doing their thing. Now there's the chance for some variety, and in my eyes. That is always cause for celebration. So, was I looking forward to the climax last year? Not even a joke. I've got the grin on my face, but there was no joke there. Proceed. Was I looking forward to it last year? Of course. Okay, but this year, I'm a little more excited about the climax. Because I don't know what's coming. (laughs) That was puns! Puns for the win. <laughs> Technically, you're right. Like, there's so much... And they're already shaking stuff up. Uh, this isn't a spoiler, by the way. It just hasn't happened that recently. But Okada just got beat for... Rainmaker just got beat for the IWGP title by Tetsuya Naito. And really? Most, yeah. He's a champ now. So, Okada is ch- is chasing the championship again. Uh, I believe the champ can actually be in the in the climax. So, uh, yeah, you've got Naito in there too. Of course, as Tana... long as those two are in the finals, if they're in the finals, I call it bullshit. Yeah. As long as <laughs> it's it. not those two necessarily in the finals, or Tana or Tanahashi, Japanese Cena. Yeah, as, as long as he's not anywhere. But still, even then, they have so many other guys that are going. You've got. Uh, Kenny Omega, who is now like the de facto leader of the Bullet, Bullet Club, Club, assuming the elite is like a different thing. You've got the Young Bucks, who are still around. You've got the remnants of Bullet Club, Bad Luck Fale, Tama Tonga, uh, Yujiro, and uh, I think now they got Meng's other son. Yeah, he's around too. Uh, of course, you got DVD Phil, who's clearly going to win the entire thing. DVD, DVD Phil, our patron champion. Yes, yes. <laughs> Take it all the way, buddy. And you are also got Michael Elgin in there now, yeah. more full-time. He did a great job last year. Oh, boy. I'm so there, there's a lot to look forward to here. They oh, yeah, lo- big time. They lost a lot of talent to the WWE, but let's face it. Let's mm. face it. It's New Japan. Where talent goes, tal- they bring more talent in. Oh yeah. So there there's nothing to worry about in that respect. Oh yeah. There, the the climax is going to be huge yeah. this year. Yeah, they really haven't announced a full they always, I think they always do a full announcement of the roster of participants. That should be coming soon. Don't know when that's going to drop, but it'll certainly be interesting to see the full lineup and you know what? I know I'm going to want to talk about it. Yeah, I'll 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 try to watch these what 5 a.m. shows. <laughs> All Jeez. throughout the summer. Yeah, as soon as I get back from Evo, the whole thing yeah, starts. I'll have you download them. I'll have you download them and send them to me. That, that's hey, probably the way that's going to work. I'll, I'll definitely spread <laughs> the word on the most noteworthy stuff. So, Because, uh, hey. geez, 6, 6 a.m. is rough, man. Hey. That's it. <laughs> But then again, when you're an early riser like me and sometimes you just don't sleep well and you got nothing better to do, hey, put on some coffee, watch some New Japan. Go do it. <sighs> so anyway, that's backstage news. Uh, we were going to talk about Conor McGregor, but apparently he's not retiring a blue, blue, blue. But I, I, I'm sorry, Conor. We, we all love you here. Please don't hurt me. We, we all love you, but... Um... Make up your damn mind. Seriously. <laughs> One day he's retiring because he lost once. The next day he's not anymore. <laughs> but make up your damn mind. That's because our it, Connor. At da, this da, point, da, da, da. At, at this point, at, at this point, it's like uh, un, unless uh, unless it's about your next fight, I don't care. I, I don't care. <laughs> just go out and just go out and kick some more ass. Or don't. Whatever. It's it's 
it and it's annoying that people that people are all like all angry at him. He's Conor McGregor. You get angry at him, he's gonna beat the crap out of you. Shut up. <laughs> That's it. Eh, whatever. That anyway, that ship has sailed. It didn't last long. But, but if he did, like, but if he, did, but if he retired because he lost once, come on, man. <laughs> I don't know. Come on, come on. <laughs> anyway, get before, back on that horse. You know what? <laughs> Speaking of getting out back on the horse, we had some pretty noteworthy stuff happening this week in wrestling, didn't we? Yeah, we did. It. T- how about a, a three week? When was the last time we had a three week span? Okay, where Quite the a while. where the Raws or I won't I won't go and say they were great, but I'll be like I did, I sat in I front of watching a, I I sat in front of a TV for three hours and didn't and didn't once say. I can't take this shit anymore. <laughs> and you know what's been really catching my eye? What they're doing with this tag team title tournament sponsored by Bootios. And and I love that the finalists... Okay, the finalists are the two brand new tag teams. And the ones I'm most excited about. Enzo and Big Cass versus the Vaude Villains. Who are going to apparently wrestle for the, for the number one contendership at Payback. That was weird. That was a little weird. That was a lot weird. <laughs> that was I. I thought that this was a tournament to determine the number one contenders for payback. I guess I was wrong, <laughs> but but you but, know what? That instantly made this. It instantly made payback a must watch in my eyes. It, it this it, match alone. Well, I'm I'm not gonna go that far, but I will go like. Well, I already it, have the it network. Gives, it's not gonna cost me anything more. <laughs> it gives it meaning. To have this match on the pay per view, it, it it's like it's not on a random Raw or SmackDown where they get ten minutes, ten minutes, a couple commercial breaks, and all that. You're getting prime time spot on pay per view, no breaks, probably fifteen minutes. Show what you got, and mm-hmm. what these two these two teams have shown it. On on Absolutely. on NXT, what they've got against each other, so go for it. And and basically, this is a match. Honestly, quite honestly, I don't care who wins. Either team win it. Either team could win, and I'd be like, yay! <laughs> oh yeah, big time. Yeah, and and Enzo and Cass, man. They're in WWE for three weeks. They're already the most over over people on the roster. Oh yeah, Jesus. <laughs> Personally, <laughs> I wouldn't say uh, over on the entire roster. No, <clears throat> Nakamura. No, see, he doesn't count. He doesn't count because that's that was NXT. A half joke, sir. Half joke. Half half joke, but it, it's also one of those doesn't count. I like, know. Every, and so, a joke. will will he will he show up on Raw and blow everyone out of the building? Of course, of course he will. But until that time, let me have my Enzo and Big Cass as the most over people on the roster. <laughs> One last thought before we, because we're going to get into this in the weeks ahead, right up, right before payback. Can let's just take a moment in silence, and just consider for a moment the possibility. Of Enzo and Big Cass exchanging dialogue with the New Day. Go. Uh, Talk about a climax. <laughs> That's it. Oh. That's it. That That's... is one thing. That is one thing that I will be sitting in front of the TV. Uh... <laughs> but wait, there's more. Because on this weekend Raw, we also got. The Bullet Club beating up on Roman Reigns. Yay! What kind of world are we living in? Just bring, just brings me back to that moment where we might get the Bullet Club versus the Shield. Oh boy! Oh boy! That gives me a giant happy. Like, like, <laughs> like, it, just Roman Reigns and the Usos is one thing. 
But you know Seth Rollins is going to get a pop when he comes back. Yeah, so, supposedly he's coming back as a face, too. So, so why not? One last go big, around. Big, big summer pay-per-view match. There's always one where they don't defend the title. Mm-hmm. There's always one in the summer where they don't defend the title that have the six man as the main event on on say the money in the bank pay per view. That would be that would make for a very fun pay per view. Have the six have have the Bullet Club versus the Shield. It'll be the Wyatt family and the Shield all over again. Oh boy! If they build it up right, it absolutely could be. Yeah. So I want it. I want it badly. I I want it now, but I can wait. Mm-hmm. I can be patient. Okay, but it needs to happen. These next <laughs> few weeks are going to be very interesting, especially if we're th- if we're only this far out from WrestleMania. That's saying quite a lot. However, there is one other thing I wanted to talk about. Something of the utmost importance here. Did you get a chance to see NXT this week? I did not. Then you missed the debut of No Way Jose. Oh no! Yes, he, <laughs> no, no. yes, yes, indeed. No way, Jose is here, and he's and he's gonna take over. <laughs> and he's actually pretty good. I I am dead serious. I'm, I'm gonna good. I'm gonna have to check that out now that I have uh, I have some free time. Yes, he's. So. I'm trying to think of a way to describe him. He's like. Do you remember? Uh, What's his What's his name? Uh, the guy who uh, with in the old ECW, the guy who married Layla Ortiz, something. Oh, uh, Tito Ortiz. No, not Tito. No, not Tito. Uh, that's a that's a. You know, I want to say um, it's not Ricky Ortiz. Ricky Ortiz, yes, Ricky Ortiz. That, I was gonna say that's like a Street Fighter player. What? What? I know. Well, that that. Ortiz, whatever. It's it's Ricky Ortiz. It sounds like a Street Fighter player, and that's why the gimmick didn't work. <laughs> that's it. Except seriously, how many people other than like me and Xavier Woods even know who Ricky Ortiz is? Anyway, <laughs> this guy is like a toned down version of him who actually has talent. He's Good. Like, he's like a Puerto Rican guy who wears Hakushi's pants, and he is actually he can come up and be in that useless tag team with Primo and Epico. That would, except that would be a waste for this guy. It would be a waste, but it's the WWE, so that's where they're heading. (laughs) No way, Jose Primo and Epico, the Cuban connection. That's it. I don't even know. (laughs) I thought they were from Puerto Rico, not Cuba. Whatever. (laughs) Okay, now we're drifting into racist territory here. (laughs) So I'm just gonna leave it at that. You should definitely check out No Way Jose. I think he's more promising than a guy with that name should have any right to be. But you know what? Yeah, they're, they basic just with that gimmick alone. They're basically murdering him. But but if the talent can shine through, it, we might get something other than No Way Jose on the main roster with this guy. And honestly, Holy crap. <laughs> just give it a chance. Just give it a chance. And you know what? You, yes you, the person listening to this, should give it a chance too. Of course, we always want to know what you think. Also, yes. hold on before we go into Ooh. that. Okay. Yes. What you got? I've got I've got breaking news on the Bray Wyatt calf injury. Oh, yes. That that came out either yesterday or earlier this morning, but I have it with me right now. It is believed that the injury isn't as bad as feared. Mm-hmm. I forgot. I heard about that too. Actually, it's believed that he pulled a muscle. Mm-hmm. Okay, and will be out of action four to six weeks. That is, you want if to talk that's about the case? If that's the case, he could be back in time for the Extreme Rules pay per view. There you go. And after the face reaction he got during that tag team match a couple weeks ago, I cannot wait. Mm-hmm. And and. They'll probably do the Wyatt Family versus League of Nations that they were planning for payback at Extreme Rules. So it's just delayed by a month. No big yeah, deal. So looking at the photos and the video footage, it looked a lot worse than apparently it did because the dude couldn't move. Okay? <laughs> That's it. You, It felt like we were looking at Seth Rollins again. 
Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, I still haven't seen the footage. It, and part it, of me just doesn't really want to. It's it. He jumped off the he jumped off the turnbuckle and his leg just buckled. Oof. Under him and could not move. Like dude was in tears. Poor Uncle Bray. So so to hear that it wasn't as bad and and four to six weeks. Yay. Good. <laughs> Get back, get well soon, Uncle Bray. Start eating some worlds again. Yes. Start eating some worlds for the good guys. <laughs> so, let's divert the, the conversation back to you guys. What do you want to see Bray Wyatt do next? Is he going to be back in full speed? What, how far is No Way Jose going to go? Who is going to climax this summer in Japan? And is No Way Jose the dumbest gimmick you have ever heard of? We want to hear it all. Seriously, get in touch with us. Leave a comment on this video. If you like what you hear, like us. Subscribe if you want to hear more every single week. New content every single week. You can also go to our Facebook page. Just look us up at The Scholars of Wrestling Show. And, of course, you can always follow us on Twitter. On our main pa our main account, at ScholarsOW. You Brian. can find me at Atomic Beanpole. You can find me at I'm Robbie Rage, all one word. And of course, you can always find our cohort in crime, Scholar Tarek, at The Avatarek, all one word. Yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. Yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. So, of course, finally, this crazy, crazy week is behind us. We brought it all together. Let's put the capstone on it. You know who we are. We are the Scholars of Wrestling, and you have just been schooled. You're, You're welcome. welcome. Let's watch a No Way Jose match. Why not? Why not?